and hello. It is time for some more Genshin Impact. This is episode 142. And where we got to go now is we got to go back to the fortress of Meripede. And I got to talk to a lot of people. So let's just go ahead and teleport to the production zone. Hopefully there will be people to talk to in the production zone. If there aren't, dang, come it. We'll just have to teleport to a different point. Like so. Since none of the people got to talk to her in the production zone. Boats are made for transferring commodities back and forth. And those that come across Leora tend to stay a while. So Boat? it is where many things come to settle. Boats are also used for transporting people from one place to another. Not just products. Of course, he would look at it from a business point. He's the guy that produced the whole entire economy of Liyue. Built his whole life upon contracts. Zhongli is too long-winded. I don't know why I have him out. Hey, you're still here. I see you didn't evacuate. So I guess we'll start here. Talk to the Fatui children. Guess. What suit will this next card be? Uh, if you're talking about regular suits, I'm going to say it's going to be... It's going to be a spade. Uh, a bear teeth cat? Never mind. Well, well, look who it is. Traveler, Paimon. Hi. <sighs> it's been a crisis. Hello, everyone. Looks like you're recovering nicely, Fremenet. Eh? Would you have been able to evacuate? Mm -hmm. Thanks to everyone's support. Oh, right. I... I managed to work up the courage to thank Miss Clorand in person. Nice. Oh, how did she react? Uh, she told me that it was nothing. It was as if saving a life wasn't a big deal to her at all. She also told me not to worry about it. She didn't want to stress you out, that's all. She's right, and it's best not to dwell on it. She also doesn't express yeah. much emotion. Okay, but check this out. We went back to the opera house, and we met the knave. You met father? Did she say anything to you? Yeah, she was very threatening. She said a few things that were, uh, a bit hard to understand. And also that she's looking forward to working with us in the future. It was a little surprising. Her attitude towards you is even better than what we'd imagined. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh... You should believe her. She has her own way of doing things, and she'll do everything in her power to help those she considers close, which now might also include you. Uh... Mm -hmm. Father is very capable and also trustworthy. Uh... Oh, Paimon just remembered that she thought Lenny was a bit too proud as well. She said that you should learn how to rely on others sometimes. Were you uh, supposed to say that to him? Got it. Huh. That does sound like something that father would say. Hey! Are you going to stay here for the next few days? I have no clue. Looks like it, yeah. Okay, yeah. Excellent. Looks like I it. I will host a tea party. For real? Then Pima wants another serving of cake. Another implies that you were already served some delicious cake while you were up there. Hmm, how lovely. She's got you, well, Next time, you're going to have tea and snacks with us. All right, that's one conversation down. As for the others, I shouldn't pass up the sparkles. Beginner's protector. All right, so from the looks of it, the one that has the numbers right here is the one closest to us currently. Or no. Oh. It's our little nurse friend. Ah, I see how we're going to do Let's go here, over there, and then finish up in Rivesley's Rive, Rive office. Sigwin. Sijuin. Sijuin. Traveler, Paimon, you're back. Yes, and still unable to pronounce your name properly. Are you still doing all right? Did either of you get hurt? Don't worry. 
We're both doing great. We're fine, but what about you guys? It was such a huge mess. How bad was it? Did a few she see people it? sustained superficial injuries, but that's about the extent of the damage. Monsieur Nervulet paid us a visit. It was all thanks to him that we managed to suppress the crisis for the time being. Cool. Well, of course, we must also thank you for the help you provided. That's How not necessary. How did know that he was needed here? Well, Monsieur Nervulet has strong resonance with the hydro element. When the water level rises, he can feel the waves produced. Shouldn't this have already been kind of concluded with the fact that he's a water dragon? Of the wounded. They were mumbling the whole time about how you just ran down without a word. I'm so relieved to see that you're both all right. Yeah, we run without you're speaking much. you pressed for time, please stay with us a few more days. Just let me know if you get a craving for any particular dish so I can have Mr. Wolsey get your meals prepared. Oh, and please feel free to visit the infirmary for a break at any time. I'd like to take the opportunity to spend some more time observing your facial muscles as well. Your happy smiles are quite contagious, you know. They're so memorable, and I've missed them immensely while you were gone. That was a very weird way of putting it. I mean, I get it. The reason why she said it. Still a very weird way of putting it. Alright, let's go over here. We're probably going to talk to the duo. The bombshell bros. Yep, they're right where we first found them. Hi guys. That uh, you you guys are back? Yeah. Is that a problem? Should we Let's not come go, back? Madeline! You guys didn't get caught and thrown back down here, right? Huh? No. no not at all. We returned uh, on our own. Here I thought you'd managed to escape from jail during all the commotion. I'd held you up as legendary jailbreakers, but now you're telling me you just never left? Uh, I guess. <laughs> But we just had some business to take care of. All right, all right. There's no need to get caught up in the details. We're just relieved to see you. He was super worried about you, you know. <laughs> hey, it wasn't just me. Weren't you super worried as well? Uh, something like that, yeah. Aww. I was also transferred to work in the kitchen a few days ago. I can still hear Quisto mumbling to the carrots. Are those two all right? Do you think they made it out alive? Whenever he'd say that, I'd tell him I'm sure they're fine. Wherever they are, they're kicking back with drinks in hand, enjoying the lovely scenery. Hey, there's nothing wrong with worrying about your prison pals, is there? I mean, considering how they always love listening to all my gossip. These two, they sure are a lot warmer and friendlier than when Paimon first met them. I'm sure the welfare meals must have just skyrocketed in quality recently. Your meals will bring all the prisoners to the cafe, uh, to the cafeteria. Let's go with the first one. Oh, well, if you say so. I'll be watching you to make sure you finish every last bite. Creepy. I know what he's getting at, but creepy. All right, let's go talk to Ridesley. He's definitely in his office. Will he be on this first level or the top level? Or will he actually be in the basement? We'll only know after we enter. Uh, downstairs. Oh, we're not talking to Risley. We're talking to the scientists with the love-hate relationship. Jurier? Miss Sijuin told me you still haven't eaten. She's concerned. Yeah, I was working on something, so I forgot. She's concerned. Uh, that's no for Hi. What's you two? It is us two. We're back. Hello there. It's been quite the mess here recently. How have you been? Uh, we're fine, thanks. And you? Are you still taking the secret passageway from the infirmary to work on the ship? Yep. That is still top secret, though. So don't say a word to anyone. You gotta it can dude. be a bit annoying when there are lots of people in the infirmary, but I still prefer taking that route over the one from the Duke's office. I That's mean, what we just the said. infirmary does make it easier for you to slack off. Oh yeah? 
Then why are you also here so much? You two really Ooh. are just using your jobs as a cover for your relationship, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Not at all! <gasps> they said it in tandem. So now we go talk to Ridesley. Yeah, the fact they said together means they get it all in secret. And they violent about it, too. Which is not a good thing. Ridesley, hi! Uh, can we talk to you from here? Yes, we can. Do my eyes deceive me, or did I just see two inmates come back after making it to the surface? Some strange winds blowing of late. We wanted to see how the fortress mm. is doing. Is everything still all right? We're fine, for the most part. Nervalet came down and took care of the worst of it. If that's the case, why don't you just ask him to stay here? Because he's got work to do. Oh, yeah. He's what, a very busy plan? dragon. Let's go convince the Udex himself to exchange the Quartz of Fontaine for a puddle of water in the middle of nowhere. It's worth a shot. I don't think that's going to work. He came here in a hurry and left without even stopping for a cup of tea. He did remember to take Miss Sijuin's gift with him, though. Which was... He sure sounds super busy. Miss Cloran has left as well. She also took her gift from Miss Sijuin. Which Were was... Were the gifts milkshakes? Nervalette got the milkshake. Cloran received lipstick instead. Hmm. Uh, those aren't even remotely alike. I don't know. Well, it's Nervilet's own fault for making Sijuin worried about his health by working so much. But besides that, our head nurse is still pretty fond of picking out beauty products for the ladies. Oh, and I have some gifts here for you as well. Are these from Sijuin too? Nope. <laughs> she sounds like so yours truly. You've already wrapped up your work at the fortress, so you can return to the surface at any time. Yay! You haven't yet served your full prison term, however, so you may continue to use your cell until your term is up. For Hi, real? Then we could stay here for a really long time? Is food still covered? You may access the cafeteria for free. Hooray! That makes Pam unhappy. Just remember to come complete your paperwork once it's time for your release. You got it, dude. Uh, return to the dormitories to rest. If that's going to be the case. Let's teleport up because I'll be faster. Alright, and make our way around. Stop. Pick it up. And we're back on the path to the dormitories. Yo, give me that claymore. Why are you bouncing so much? It was a waster. Time waster. All right, let's go sleep. It's been a long day, even though I just started recording up again. We're back in our cell again. We're no longer prisoners, though, so it really doesn't feel the same. But we haven't finished serving out our term. It feels like a huge weight is off our shoulders. It feels like we've regained our... Freedom, freedom. Let's say we sure feels that way, but the truth is, we never did anything bad to begin with. So I'm not sure why we put so much pressure on ourselves. Speak for yourself, Paimon. Paimon, is there something you'd like to say? Huh? How did you know? Because you usually just immediately fall asleep. Hey, that's not true. <sighs> All right. Okay, Paimon wanted to say that we really are an amazing duo after all. It's like, we've now gone to so many places together and become friends with so many people. We've never stopped traveling or stopped meeting new friends. There are so many bad things in the world and we're just two people, but we've still been solving problems no matter where we go. Isn't that pretty cool? We're the best adventurers ever. You're counting Paimon today? Aren't you the only adventurer here? Being a guide counts too. Then let's ask Catherine to give Paimon an adventurer handbook as well. You can just read mine. I'll also be an adventurer from today forward. Ah, I just got thoughts making Paimon giddy. Oh, Paimon's gonna crash, so you sleep soon too. The last time we fell asleep here, we 
woke up to a whole mess outside ourselves. The primordial seawater nearly rose up. True, that, that so we were scary. sleeping just before that happened. We should be safe now, right? Paimon, we'll be fine, so don't worry, Paimon. All right, then. Good night to you, traveler. Good night to you, Paimon. We're gonna see more from Child. We already know that he's at the cat's tail. Oh wait, no, he's just flown in the sea. Wake up, Child. That doesn't look like Kyogre. Cataclysmic quickening. Quest completes. Wait. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. We've got to wait for another update before we can do more of the story. But that means we could do the event that's going on right now the congenial gathering. You hear the mon. That Monsat and Liyue are hosting a joint event to decide and decide to take a look. So I've been wanting to do this. So I should hit navigate on it because this is what we're going to be doing. But at the exact same time, kind of hate the fact that I'm running on uh, doing run ons for missions. Because, yeah, we've only been going for like 16 minutes. Uh, well,. I guess it's just how the cookie crumbles. However, before the cookie keeps on crumbling more, let's update our consolation. The movement speed of rising water's bubble will be decreased by 30 seconds and duration increased for by three seconds. Okay. And as for the achievements, go ahead and grab this. And the adventure handbook. I really don't get what's going on with all this anymore. Here we go. Wait. We're getting closer to be able to do another roll. We're not too far off. Yeah, we just need two more in order to do another ten roll. And then we could possibly get Rithesley. Wouldn't that be dope? Or we can go for Venti. Venti would be cool to have too. But anyway, it is time to do the timed event. We only have like 10 and a half days left to do it. And when this gets posted, the event will be over. But I don't care about that too much. Uh, oh, higher. It's about to say, I don't see where we're supposed to be. But now I see we need to go higher and higher still. Aha! Otao and Venti meets. <laughs> Looks like you're having fun. What's the occasion this time? Oh, do I spy a traveler and a Paimon? We were just talking about you. This is more serendipitous than finding Mora after face planting on the road. <laughs> Hello, you two. What are the odds? It's been too long. I'll bet you have some thrilling new tales from your journey to fill me in on. I can see it in your eyes. Never a dull moment on this to that trip. Excellent. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. What were you talking about before we got here? Something fun or oh, something delicious? Of course, my mom wants that. <laughs> we were talking about one certain traveler and how two's Ooh. company, but three's a crowd, as the inseparable duo tore around to that, making four friends here and five more there, often at sixes and sevens as they brave the lakes and seas, collecting pieces of eight and countless other treasures. <laughs> they clearly must have nine lives. Wink, wink. Let's hope they have less than ten deaths. Uh, it just gets worse and worse. It do though. Shortly, you may attend a grand banquet at Stonegate. 
all will be dressed to the nines for majestic food and fine wines. And after eight long drinks oh, and no. seven shorts, they'll each write six lines five times. You've been to all four corners of the world, so in three short seconds, can you guess from these two stanzas of one speech each what this event is about? A counting festival, but it's obviously poetry. Correct! It's a poetry gala, and Mondstadt and Liu are hosting it together. Do you still remember the promise I made to the distinguished director who here during the Lantern Rite? No. Oh, something about writing poetry together? That's right. At the dinner table that night, I just knew this young bard was a rare talent with exceptional taste. Young bard? It's rare to encounter such a kindred spirit. And now, I finally seized the chance to collaborate. It took me much trekking across the land to petition Eugene Terrace and contact the Knights of Favonius, but eventually... In the spirit of friendship and poetry sharing, I managed to successfully organize the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala. Bit of a weird name. Mm -hmm. Lewis poetry is known far and wide, and Mondstadt is the city of wine and song. With two nations teaming up, it'll be double the fun, and a great chance for people from both places to get to know one another. Hu Tao and I will be the co-hosts for this poetry gala, of course, I haven't studied the various forms and formalities of Liyue poetry for very long, so please forgive my dreadful performance just now. Not at all, Venti. You followed my lead most excellently. I also think he was better. <laughs> you flatter me. Well, well this sounds anything. like fun. Let's get involved! Forsooth, I am wont to dabble in verse. Sure, I'm looking forward to everyone's poetry. It'll be amazing. Remember that time in Liyue when Paimon gave you the first half of a couplet? Wind rises, winds never churn. You came up with the second half right away. But the sea of clouds, clouds always return. Oh, looks like someone's got a knack for this. Perhaps we'll have to raise the difficulty a little. Uh oh. All right, so basically you guys are here to discuss the activities for the poetry gala, right? Oh, looks like little Paimon's brain has gained a wrinkle or two. You guessed it so effortlessly, but you still guessed it wrong. <gasps> huh? Wait, Paimon guessed wrong? We came here hoping to invite a special guest. Us? I already told you, I'm not going. Oh. Xiao, you're here too! Never having penned a verse myself. How could I hope to judge the poetry of others? Besides, afflicted with karma as I am, the raucous atmosphere you are cultivating is precisely the kind which I must avoid, as you well know. Hey now, there's a first time for everything, right? We all start from itsy bitsy spider, but give it a shot and you'll be wandering lonely as a cloud in no time. And you don't even have to join us in person if you really don't want to. You can just watch the party from a nearby mountaintop and uh, cheer us on. But at least head down and take a look first. It's right by the inn, and there's plenty of fun activities to get involved with. It can't hurt to take a quick walk and check things out. True. Besides, with the renowned traveler here, what is there to fear? Join us. It'll be fun. <sighs> I don't know. I'm kind of dreading I'll it, too. Consider it. It's nearly time. Why don't you all head to the venue and take a look around? Quite a few of your friends should have arrived by now. Yes, that's right. Venti and I still need to discuss the poem for the opening ceremony. So uh, we'll catch up with you later. Plus, our adeptus friend might need a bit more convincing. We'll see if we can coax him down. Gotcha! We'll be on our way then! Alright, so genial gathering. Started. Go to Stone Gate. Where the heck is Stone Gate? Oh, over here. Let's uh, teleport to make things easier. Wow, it's so lively. Didn't think there'd be so many people here already. And a lot of them are familiar faces. Let's go say hi. 
Oh, Sing Cho being here makes perfect sense. Chong Yun too, since, you know, one would typically drag the other. Hmm? Well, look who's here. This poetry fest seems to have attracted talent of the highest caliber. Hey, Sing Cho and Chong Yun are here too. I was actually heading into the mountains to train, but he accosted me on the way and dragged me here. Sounds about right. Oh, how your words wound me. Is it not the responsibility of an exorcist of Liyue to ensure that this celebration of friendship between our two nations stays free of evil spirits? Besides, you could say this that. is an excellent opportunity to meet heroes who have come from far and wide. Surely, you must be curious as to how that heroine of Mondstadt was able to lift such heavy objects like they were but a feather. Are you talking about Noelle? Yeah, she's super strong. And nobody here is named oh. Shirley. Well, since you are so well acquainted, could we trouble you to introduce us later? Okay, fine. But don't forget to help me with my investigation like you promised. That's the only reason I agreed to come at all. Huh? What investigation? Uh, um, naturally, I could never forget such a thing. My word is my bond. Relax, dear Paimon. All will be revealed in time. Uh, okay. Oh, talk to everyone. So that means we gotta walk around and talk to everybody that's shown up. Not you people. Um, where's some more familiar people? Fiona? And Noel and, um... Milo? Pretty sure has his name. It's been a minute. Oh my gosh! So much iron. Yona! Diana! Traveler and Paimon? Uh, I didn't expect to see you here. Are you well, here? Drinks? That's right! I was specially asked to attend this event on behalf of the cat's tail, and I'm also here as a mixologist representing the Mondstadt wine industry. You're Even though she hates alcohol? Representing Mondstadt's wine industry? Oh, you must be hating every minute of it. Of course I hate it! But it's also a perfect chance to destroy the reputation of Mondstadt's wine business once and for all! Opportunities like this don't come around every day, you know. I don't think that you really did a good job of doing it so far. figure that? <laughs> all I need to do is add some gross ingredients to the drinks, and I could create the most disgusting concoctions imaginable! <laughs> she should probably chill out of it. Will ever buy wine from Mondstadt again? <laughs> uh, Paimon thinks you'll end up getting the opposite result. Probably. Oh, just you wait! I ain't about to mess this up. Good luck. Don't overwork yourself. Are you gonna write some poetry with us, too? Poetry? Hmm. I've heard plenty of bards sing in the tavern before, but I've never tried writing any myself. You should join in. It'll be fun. Mm. Fine. If I have time. All right. And one more group to talk to. Oh, it's the Traveler in Paimon. Yes, it is. Are you here is. for the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala as well? Yes, and that's a mouthful. <laughs> you said that with a straight face? Is Paimon the only one who thinks it sounds weird? Are you here as Mondstadt's representatives? Re representatives Uh, no. Nothing fancy like that. Who said it was we fancy? We were sent here by the Knights of Favonius to help maintain order and set up the venue. But... Uh, I didn't really do anything useful so far. Noelle brought all these tables and chairs here from Mondstadt by herself. She's a true knight. Oh, no, that's just not true. Your efforts were indispensable. You selected the venue, drew up the layout, and so on. Also, you're the true knight here. I'm still in training. If anything, I should be addressing you as sir. What? No, 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 please don't. Just keep calling me Mika. Uh, why does it feel like these two could keep this up all day? 
Because they anyway, probably could. Master Jean did say that as long as we keep on top of our work, we should take a look around while we're here and get involved in the poetry gala as much as we can. Yeah, why but not? I haven't written much poetry before, so I'm not sure if I'll fit in. I actually have the same concern. The important thing is to participate. There's a first time for everything. Yeah, plus, you won't be alone. We're joining too. The traveler's a really good rider, you know. Really? In that case, we'll try our best too. Perhaps. The challenge of writing poetry is a rite of passage that all who wish to qualify as a knight must eventually face. No. Uh, Paimon wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't either. But anyway, no backing out now. See you soon. Sure. Maybe you can teach me a thing or two. Oh, Maybe. Mika beat me to it. I was going to ask for help too. I'll teach you both. We'll write together. Yeah, it should be everyone. Uh, take part in the opening event. That'd be right here. Guess the wind forces everyone Songs to breathe. Melodies you close our eyes. That's what it said. pastures beyond their home. Two greedy fishies struggling to swim. They ate so much that they're starting to groan. Uh, I am too. Fly draped in gold robes, a bright little light from that glaze lantern glows. And just pinch the rice and scoot while the boars of the forest anxiously root. Welcome, one and all, to this festival of poetry, jointly organized by Lua and Mondstadt. Or, in full, the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala. We're your hosts, Liyue's verse monger of the darkest alleys, Hu Tao. And Mondstadt's liquor loving lyricist, Venti the Bard. The purpose of this event is to promote friendly poetic exchanges between our two nations. So please, have fun, talk to other people, and make some new friends. If you're here, you're our guest. So please enjoy this poetry fest. I'd also like to reassure everyone that this event welcomes people of all skill levels, from first-time rhymers to seasoned songwriters. If you ask me, the most important thing you can bring to writing poetry is authenticity. That means reaching deep down to all the thoughts and feelings you usually hide away or struggle to express and putting them into words. Just write from the heart in whatever form you like. To help everyone really cut loose and enjoy themselves to the fullest, Venti and I have carefully prepared a three themes to be revealed over the course of three days. Let's get right to it. The first theme is Riddle Me This. I'm starting to wonder what this is all going to consist of. Like, huh? what all we have to do for it's this event? A pretty good choice for a warm up activity. This is going to be like a Ooh, riddle me this. this right, Sonic, it's going to be like a scavenger hunt where you got to figure out Does the riddle. Does everyone see the lanterns hanging around the venue? Uh huh. These have been specially prepared for the riddle game. Huh? Simply write down your riddle and hang it on a lantern. Then Venti and I will select a few to pose to the crowd, and you will try to solve them. We'll now give you some time to write down and hang up your riddles. Feel free to walk around and talk with the other contestants to get the creative juices flowing. And remember, whoever guesses the most riddles correctly will get a prize. And with that, the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala has officially begun. Yay. I'm concerned. You the first poetry riddle. Oh, here. Oh, let's see what's on this lantern. Hmm. We're going to be doing this with Noel. Tender sigh for home. How far the flowers roam. A visitor asks me why, for a dream beyond the sky. Okay, someone from Lua definitely wrote this one. I just read that one too. Lua's poems seem pretty difficult to grasp. Dreams? Sky? Is it talking about some kind of bird? Um, Cloud so it means something like, uh, this thing's really far from home. It's in a vast area, and it's flying really high! Is that it? In a nutshell, yes. Oh, you're amazing, Paimon! 
Oh, it looks like I still have a lot of learning to do. Oh, it's nothing, really. Once you've spent enough time in Leeway, you just sort of pick up on these things. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. Back when I was out with the Grandmaster on the expedition, I started picking up some local customs without even realizing it. But back to the riddle. We still haven't actually solved it. What could it be talking about? Something that flies high and far. Hmm. Oh, that makes me think of dandelions. Not with Leo Way now. Oh, that makes sense. And Mondstatters believe that dandelions can carry your feelings on the wind. But maybe we're missing something? We what can't sound? be that easy. After all, it's a riddle from Leo Way. What would their equivalent of the dandelion be? If there even is one. What do you think, Traveler? I think Dandelion is the right answer. Great! Then we'll have one answer ready to go when the game begins. The important thing is that it's authentic. Right! Just like Venti said. As long as the interpretation makes sense and reflects our perception of the poem, then perhaps there are no wrong answers. Well, no matter what the real answer is, the guessing's all a part of the fun! Let's go look at the next one! Oh, yes! I want to see if there's any Mondstadt-style riddles. So far, this doesn't seem like a very fun event. Uh, here. This one says... Oh, this handwriting is just awful. Um, I have four corners like a square pancake. But <laughs> I'm stuffed and seasoned and carefully baked. I pass through the lips one piece at a time. The more you consume, the broader your mind. Oh, well, Paimon's drooling from that one. Is there really a food that can make you smarter? Paimon's gotta try that. It's a book. <laughs> oh, Paimon, you have to look past the surface level meaning with riddles, or you'll fail to plumb their depths. Huh? So have you got any ideas, Shincho? It's a book. <laughs> Well, stuff of the knowledge Shincho it feeds your mind. That riddle up a moment ago. Oh, so this is Shincho's riddle. And he has horrible you know, handwriting. I was expecting you to write something a little more elegant. Also, it makes perfect sense this if Keith talks about a book. about building friendship and mutual understanding. With so many friends from Mondstadt present, I thought I'd try writing something more accessible and less flowery, so that more people could enjoy it. Hey, not bad. Uh, so, buddy, does that mean you can tell your old pal Paimon the answer on the sly? Or... Paimon, it's a book. Not a chance. You'll have to wait for the answer to be revealed, just like everyone else. It's a book. <laughs> Mimi! If that's how you feel, why don't you try and stump me with a riddle of your own? Uh, uh, maybe Paimon will! We'll see who stumps who! Traveler, you'll help Paimon come up with a riddle, right? Badly. I don't know how we're going to do that. At least you're nice to Paimon. On occasion. <laughs> then I look forward to seeing the fruits of your literary labors. Ha! Prepare to get stumped! You know what? I think her literary labors will be about fruit. That'd be my best guess. All right. Can I read this one again? A tender sigh for home. How far the flowers roam? A visitor asks why. I think of it. Or a dream beyond the sky. Hmm, yeah, I think dandelion is, dandelion is fine for that. <gasps> Alright, where's the last one? Uh, over here. I hope the third uh, one's the last one. Even though Paimon said she'd write a riddle, Paimon really doesn't have any clue how. Just write about food. Uh, the answer must be some other kind of object. It's a chair. I was thinking it was like a chair or a table. Huh? Diana, how did you guess it so quickly? Wait, were you the one who wrote it? 
know. Of course I didn't write it. The answer just popped into my head. I'm always telling the cats in the tavern that the chairs get tired from working all the time, so they shouldn't use them to sharpen their claws. Does that work? Oh, okay. So a riddle needs to have a bait and switch. Are you trying to write one? Yep, and thanks to you, Paimon's just thought of one. It's a sun studio. Maybe I should try to come up with one too. <laughs> All right, Paimon's riddle is now hanging up. Diona, do you want to know the answer? Nah, no need. I don't really care about winning a prize. Oh, okay then. Well, looks like it's time to carry on with the event. We should regroup with the others. Third one was the last sure. one. Have fun. Watch, Paimon's gonna be about a sensario. <laughs> All right. Go back to the stage. Hey, looks like everyone's about done mingling and riddling. <laughs> Gather around and look this way. Venti and I have selected several riddles from everyone's contributions, and we added a few of our own to the mix for good measure. Shortly, we'll randomly select a few to read aloud. If your riddle gets selected, remember that you have to announce the correct answer at the end. Anyone who guesses correctly gets one point, and if nobody guesses correctly, the writer of the riddle gets a point. Sounds fair to me. <laughs> of course, when the riddler reveals the right response, it only counts if everyone agrees that it's not too far-fetched. That's right. Now, if there are no more questions, it's time to reveal the first riddle. Hopefully, they'll draw at least some that I can get. Oh no, does only the first person to solve it get the points? Ugh, that means I have to be first to raise my hand. Please choose Paimon's riddle. Please choose Paimon's riddle. I feel like they will, because we don't know what it is right now. Number one. Let me see here. Ugh. This riddle is, uh... Sing Chos. Unique, um, especially the handwriting. Sing Chos. I have four? Co four. Four corners, like a square pancake, but I'm st stuffed and seasoned and carefully baked. Baked? Baked. I pass through the chips? Lips. Uh, one piece at a time, One page at the time. more you uh, consume, 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 the broader your mind. <gasps> they drew Shinchos. Better answer as quickly as you can. You don't want someone else beating you to it. How do you answer? You oh, brat. Um, it's uh, pizza. The answer is pizza. No, it's not. <laughs> Author coming forward, I can uh, confidently declare uh, this answer wrong. I mean, how does eating pizza broaden your mind? And okay, now you're just being disrespectful. I'm no expert in exotic dishes, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> pizza is round, is it not? Like mora meat? Unless you want to count Chicago deep dish. Makes you happy and I don't trust you though. Like that deep dish where it's basically just crust with a little bit of topping on top? Deep dish where it's just a lot of cheese, that's different. I accept okay, that. Paimon admits that's a pizza. Gun on this one. Maybe it's some other kind of food. It's not a food. No, 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 no. It's a book. Are never that simple. It's a book. It needs to be something that makes people more intelligent. It's a book! Which can also make you dumb, too. Depends on what's written in it. Oh, if Paimon had known it was going to be this tough, she'd have read more books in her time. Paimon. Uh, what is it? Have you got it? Books. Huh? They're square. They've got a lot of big words baked into them. Every word that passes through your lips as you read it out makes you smarter. Oh, gotcha! Box! The answer is box! She's so proud. <laughs> that was quicker than I expected. I was quite proud of that one. Oh? It appears the riddle writer has announced the answer. Someone catch that lizard and give it to me. One point to Paimon. Huh? So the answer was books? Oh, how did I not get that? Come on, Nika. Concentrate. <laughs> We're awesome at this. Ahem. Oh, uh, 
Uh, what Paima meant to say was that you're awesome at this. Thanks for the point, Traveler. No problem. On to riddle number two. Okay. Tell us what I it is. get in there first this time. High above the wispy clouds, amidst the gloomy snow-filled shroud, standing alone on an icy stage, beneath it every lowly sage. <laughs> Looks like a poem from Leela. Oh, it's... I got it! Uh, uh, uh. Uh, oh? Looks like those two have some ideas. Hmm. Could it be some kind of plant that lives in cold, high places? Mika, please go ahead. As a full knight of Avonius, you represent all of us from Mondstadt here. Uh, no. No, how could I? Someone else is going to shout it out first. while they're doing this. You should be the one to guess. Well, my answer isn't necessarily correct. Besides, it's first come, first served, and you beat me to it. N no, I didn't. You were just before me. Uh, Stop oh, flirting and spit it out. Consider it our fellow competitors are towards each other. A wonderful sight to see. How about both of you say your answer at the same time? If you're both right, you'll each get a point. Oops, I didn't realize we'd made such a scene. You oh, did. Crud. I guess we dragged that out a bit. Um... So, Noel, uh, what do you say? Yes, let's. Our answer is... Cecilia. Cecilia! Oh, that certainly sounds like a good candidate for the correct answer. A flower that blooms on the highest peaks and known for its exquisite beauty. The Cecilia is held by many Mondstatters to be the true Windblue. Uh... Although, since the writer hasn't yet come forward to announce the answer, this probably wasn't the answer they were looking for. <laughs> Sorry. Any other answers? Oh, I can't believe I was wrong. Maybe it's a plant from Liyue. Is the answer Qingxin? The poem does evoke a strong sense of quiet, proud solitude in a high place. Correct. I wrote this one. Qingxin is the right answer. Her name is Riddle Writer. No! Shinjo got it before Paimon could. However, you better, Paimon. after listening to the host's description, I do remember reading about Cecilia flowers in a book once. They definitely fit the description of a pure flower standing proudly and alone on high. So, I'd like to approve the answer from our two friends from Mondstadt as well. Isn't that cheating? Really? Oh, well, thank you so much. It wasn't what your intention was. <laughs> Since even the Riddler themselves agrees, all three contestants earn a point each. Weird. Darn it, Shinjo's caught up to Paimon already. We're only getting started. It's just one measly point. Yeah, you're probably right. What do you mean probably? Moving now to our third riddle. Huh? Why is the handwriting so... floaty? Must be Paimon. What's got no wings but flies in the air, never gets tired of floating up there. So full of mora it comes out the nose, but in the <laughs> sea, glug, 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 down it goes. <laughs> it's Paimon's. They picked Paimon's riddle. Yay! <laughs> the riddle is Paimon. <laughs> <laughs> It. More like, it's so ludicrously simple that we just cannot believe it. What? No way! My mom is too oh, self-absorbed. Come on then, tell us the answer if you're so sure. The answer is Paimon. Uh, what? It's Paimon. It's Paimon. I was actually going to say Paimon too. Me too. You're all completely wrong! <laughs> How the heck did you all think the answer was Paimon? She's deflecting because Paimon. everybody's right. Do you have wings behind your back? Uh, no. You're always floating, but you never seem to get tired of it. And Paimon has a very healthy appetite, which must cost the traveler a lot of mora and meal expenses. 
Oh, you know. I've heard from the senior knights that the traveler rescued Paimon by fishing her out of the sea. So, that means Paimon can't swim. So if she fell in the sea, then... Uh... She'd have to be fished out. Glug, glug. Wait, wait. Now Paimon's doubting herself. What was the answer again? Think about it for a moment. Uh, no, you're all wrong. The answer to Paimon's riddle is obviously the Jade Chamber. You know, the Jade Chamber that's always flying up there in the sky? Is that so? Hmm. I still maintain that the riddle actually describes Paimon more accurately. In fact, if we just added two more lines to the poem, it would be the perfect riddle. Huh? What do you want to add? The traveler's companion and talkative guide. A praiseworthy presence always by their side. Aww, do you mean it? Can we really add that part? I can vouch for it. Paimon's the best travel companion ever. <gasps> you think so too? Aww, yeah, emergency food is important. Jung-Yoon to get the Great! Point. And with that, the widely adored Paimon has gifted a point each to everyone who answered just now. More riddles and giggles fill the air as time flies by. <laughs> the Jade Chamber one actually was pretty clever. And even though Paimon didn't manage to beat Shincho, Paimon still feels like she got a little smarter. Oh, uh, didn't chung yoon mention he was investigating something before? Let's go ask him about it. What could he possibly be investigating? Also, there are going to be like little mini game things in all this, like a uh, typical time events. I can't see what it would hey, be. You too? Oh, hi, Paimon. You know, for a moment there, I was worried I might lose to you. Oh, really? Are you collecting your prize right now? I am indeed. Though, if you really want it, I'd be more than happy to give it to you. Seriously? Wow, what is it? Um... It's something ludicrous, isn't it? A generous donation by yours truly, as director of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Namely, a buy one, get one free coupon for our high-end customized service package. It's a pleasant surprise to learn. You're so interested in it, Paimon. No wonder he gave it up. <laughs> nope, nah, -uh. no thank you, hard pass, you can keep it. Are you sure? In that case, I'll gladly take it. Why gladly? There you are. Now remember, who are you gonna bury with you? Comes with our anytime, anywhere on demand collection service. Just give us a call and we'll be right there. Uh, with any luck, <laughs> we'll still show up even if you're <clears throat> unable to call. Wouldn't that be the point? So, to what do we owe the honor, Paimon? <laughs> what do you mean, we? Chanyun's the one Paimon's looking for, not you. Wasn't he saying something about needing help? Oh, yeah. That. How about I put it in riddle form? Huh? Isn't the competition over? Just spit it out. Twas like a demon not demonic, or devil devoid of the diabolic. Afar it floated free above the ground, but when approached, though sought, not could be found. Ciao. Um... Ciao. Sounds to me like you encountered a ghastly little ghosty in the wild. It's Zhao. Perhaps I should just explain it. Explain that it's Zhao. While I was training this morning, I suddenly caught sight of a non-human entity. So be Zhao. It was floating in the air without any kind of external aid, and its body was almost transparent. At first I thought I'd finally encountered a demon that wasn't propelled by my pure yang spirit, and immediately prepared to exercise it. But none of my methods had any effect on it. And when I went to try and get a closer look at it and try to ascertain what I was dealing with, it disappeared into thin air. Are you sure, mm, sure it's still Zhao? Sure it's not a ghost or spirit of some kind? Quite sure. I could sense that it had a physical body. Zhao. And if it were a spirit, I'm sure it would have been scared away long before I saw it. It's all my fault. I got overexcited, and in my haste, I didn't ascertain its true nature before taking action. 
Thinking back on it. He has met Zhao before, though. It wasn't an evil spirit. Maybe I offended some hotel, kind of adeptus, Venti. or illuminated beast. You shouldn't blame yourself. It was something you'd never seen before. No, you've seen Anyone it. Anyone else would have reacted the same way. Pretty sure you've seen it. Besides, we're making up for it now by doing our best to find out the truth. Are we really Any doing anything yet, though? Have you managed to untangle Chong Yun's twisted tail? Hmm. Why don't you take a guess first, Tu Tao? Oh, that means you have. <laughs> I can't be absolutely certain, but I'm reasonably sure it's not what Li Wei would call an evil spirit or demon. So whatever it is, it's not dangerous. Mm. How about this? Not sure about that. We can incorporate a search element into tomorrow's poetry activity. How would that work? Oh, We're already outside. <laughs> Close, but no. Good ideas could just pop into your head out of thin air, but if you ask me, everyone should relax tonight and get a good rest before tomorrow. You say that, but your gaze keeps drifting over towards the wine stand. Mm-hmm. And part one completes. There are going to be little mini game event things. Come on, you gotta show me them. View game. Waterborne poetry. 100 paces hurling rights. Uh. Hold up. Let's, let's back out of there for now. Cool, we got rewarded. Um. Handbook? Because they're counting it as I finish this. How does this even happen anymore? I really need to start going to the Adventures Guild and claiming those. All right. So if we go to events, Poetry Gala Fervor. Um, not the best of rewards. The reason why I say that is because none of them are primo gems. I'm a fiend for primo gems. Table side entertainment. So that's the thing that I was just showing. The poetry gala. First one completed. Then we get the next one and the next one. Okay, how about we go to the table side entertainment and we do the first one. View game. 100 pace hurling rights. Uh, Ting Ji is busy near Wang Shu In. Let's go see what this is about. Can we teleport straight to it? No. This is the best we can do. Is there going to be like a whole mess of these or is there just going to be one? If it's just one, then it doesn't have to amount to a half episode eventually. Hiya, dude. Hmm. Now it shouldn't be too difficult. What are you doing? I'm setting up the game I'm responsible for. Have you heard of 100 pace hurling rights? You want me to connect a bunch of rights to chuck things long distances? You are very perceptive. You got it half right. The core game mechanics do revolve around throwing, but that's not what rights means here. I learned about this game from an ancient book. Let me briefly walk you through it. The traditional rules dictate that all participants in this game must be sitting down as part of the rites. Well, you must also adopt a special sitting posture, which I will not demonstrate for you at this time since I don't have any cushions here. From their sitting positions, the participants must follow the music's rhythm and throw the darts into the distant pots. There are many ways to throw the darts into the pots, each with their own special names. For example, the first dart to land in the pot is called the first. If the subsequent dart also lands in the vessel, it's called a streak. If the dart hits the handles of the pot, it's called piercing. If a dart is thrown through the neck before bouncing out of the pot, it's called a valiant. Th that's way too complicated. 
that there's no way to remember all that. Don't worry, I just told you these are the traditional rules. But I have simplified them for everyone's convenience. Ahem. Anyway, all you need to know is that the goal is to throw as many darts into the pots as you can before time runs out. I'll take care of the rest. Uh, sure is simplified, all right? I mean, the rule book does say that whoever tosses the most darts into the pot wins. As for the rules that require the loser to drink and write a poem, I can't really ask every player who loses to do all that now. Now can I? Can I? Anyways, I'm almost done setting up the game. The holding pots are over there. I'll get you the darts momentarily. You can try it now if you're interested. All right, let's see. In 100 pace hurling rights, players can throw darts. Hitting any spot on the holding pot with the dart will award points. Holding the throw button will allow you to aim. Wait, holding it will allow you to aim? Release to throw the dart. Hit as many holding pots as you can within the time limit to score points. The challenge will end once time is up. Or there are no more pots left on the field. Wait, are we breaking the pots? Seems destructive, but I like it. Do you want to try playing 100 pacing hurling... Uh, 100 pace hurling rights? Sure. Here are your darts. The pots are over there. Okay, so we're going to have to do a half episode. 25 points holding pot. 25 points slight pot. That joint looks... Is that just sparkly or is it also cracked? Kind of looks cracked. Ring of rights. Point pots. What be the button? It is an ordinary holding pot created by the organizer, which will reward 25 points when hit. Slight pots are special holding pots created by the organizer that will reward 25 points when hit. For a short time after, you can fire off multiple darts consecutively while holding the throw button. Okay, I see what it is. The Ring of Rights is a special item created by the organizer. If thrown, darts will pass right through the ring and hit the holding pot. The score gain will be doubled. The ring will disappear after will disappear after appearing for a while. That's quite a countdown. What is right click? Too low. I don't get this. Oh, I see. I could have moved and gotten double points on the, these middle ones, too. Ooh. Okay, I see now. Oh, I didn't realize he even hit that. Hit it! Gosh dang. Challenge complete. So, did I 100% it? Uh, can, can I, can, can, can I look, 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 can I look? Um, sweet! Prizes! That means pretty soon we're going to be doing another roll. Because we're going to be getting quite a few Primo gems off of all this. However, hold on. Battle pass. Oh, it's just that. 
I thought it was going to be something in this BP period. No. All right. Well. <sighs> is it time enough to start the next mission? I'm not going to do it, but I figured it might be time enough to start the next mission. Hold on, before we really continue on, I want to see. We're short one intertwined fates. We have one primo gem. What type of nonsense is that? All right. Well, that'll be it for this episode. Next time we'll do the second part of this event. So, like I said, that's it with this one. Thanks so much for watching. Wait, no, 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 no. We have Genius Invocation TCG to do after this. And then next will be episode 143 where we do part two of this whole entire time event. So, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, doses. So I wrote it in the rhyme. The Reverend Doctor got an 8K wet working. The roaches get the race spray. My weak rhyme, my body, your best verses on game day. I touch the crowns of self entitled kings. You leave the heat like LeBron when I melt your idols, vital things. This is Malcolm and Martin, Million Man March and Sparta. Mixed with a legion of angels surrounding sons and daughters. Simon Peter with a desert eagle waving it at Caesar. So if I was you, I probably wouldn't miss.